going to go into a little bit of my air system now. I am definitely um, putting in a good air system on this, just like I had a very good air system or do have a very good air system in my Sprinter van. So I wanted to do the same thing here because these big 37 inch tall, tall tires, right? These 37 inch tall tires are definitely going to take a lot of air to fill. And so I'm doing a couple of things. So I'm going to have a lot of air tank capacity and a big continuous duty air compressor. It means it can run full time all the time. It's also going to be 24 volt. So this vehicle is actually a 12 volt chassis system, but my whole camper slash uh, cabin is going to be 24 volt. And I'm going to 24 volt in the camper cabin. I'll talk more about that later. It's predominantly to get the amperages down so I can go with smaller wires for the amount of battery capacity I'm going to have. I'm going to do most electronics in 24 volt that are available that way. And so I went with an extreme air compressor. And this is their high output compressor, 24 volt, as you can see. You can pull up the specs on this online. George there and another person, I can't remember her name right now, but they've both been extremely helpful and really quick with the service. They actually answer the phone when you call, like very quickly. They're very nice to talk with. They are very helpful. And, it, and also when I ordered this, they mailed everything out like that same day or the next day. And I got it like a day or two later. So they were remarkable on their service, especially right now during all these logistics issues and challenges and stuff. They were really great. Uh, George and, just, and team at Extreme Air, they went ahead and already pre-installed the check valve into their compressor head here. There are actually two outlets on their compressor. Um, this front port, and I'll call it the rear port. Um, this here is actually just a mounting port. It, it dead ends, so it doesn't actually have any um, connection. The way I'm gonna mount this is it's gonna be upside down. Cylinder head be hanging down, but give it a little more airflow across the cylinder head. It also gives a little more room for the drive shaft and and um, and stuff after the transfer case. So, anyways, and I'm going to have my big air tank. It's going to be up in the front here. So I am going to have my outlet here uh, from the air compressor. So I'm going to move my check valve to this spot and move this plug um, over to this spot. And so I've got a couple of little tools and tricks here. One is. Instead of tape, Teflon tape, I actually use this uh, product here. And granted, there's a lot of different variations of this from different brands. And, the, and, and even this brand, Hernan, has a lot of different variations of their product. But this is a lot of times when you get these air, sub air fittings that already have a, a pre-installed sealant on it. It's almost always basically this product or something very much like that product. And so... I've installed that on my tank here. I've got my drain valve that's going to be upside down. So I've got my drain valve. I got my connection going to my other tank. Down below here, I'm going to have a connect. I have this T connection that's going to go between my different air supply to my fittings on the truck uh, for filling. I've got my pressure relief valve uh, right here. And then I'm going to have my, my pressure switch right or is right here and so you can see my sealing on there this stuff seals extremely well i've had like I said a really really good luck with that and so if you go to these fittings here you see that white or that red or like this fitting here is maybe a better example you see this red sealant that's on there that's basically exactly what that hernan product is it's, it's it's a variation of that, and there's a few different variations of, like I said, this product. That's what that is. It works really great. It's rated all the way up to 10,000 PSI, and I really mean that, like in their spec, because I, I go through specs on just about everything that I end up buying and choosing and selecting, and so I really try to pick products that certainly if meet or far exceed the specifications that I am going to be dealing with in this truck. I've got my initial tank. This here is an extreme air tank. I've got all my fittings now already pre-installed, so when I mount it suspended by the feet here to my fiberglass frame that I've got this will it'll, everything will already be connected I just have to simply run a couple of airlines into these push lock connections and so anyways I'm going to swap these out now I'm going to take these out and when I do these threads are going to the thread sealant is going to get messed up so I'm going to apply some new stuff let it dry just a little bit. It doesn't need to dry a little bit, but drying a little bit just helps improve its spec. Speaking of specs, here's the Hernan specs right here. So, and, and actually for this product, and I've got a few of their products, so I have a few of their different specs here. And I pull out and I highlight some of the few key things and all the specs I need. So this stuff here, members telling you pressure resistance right here, 10,000 PSI. There it is right there. So pretty darn good. Temperature range in Fahrenheit is minus 65 to 400. 
100 degrees. That should be plenty adequate. Even being near where the, where the muffler is, the muffler won't even get that hot. I've done infrared temperature sensors on them. They don't even get anywhere near that hot. This is more than adequate. Okay, so like I was saying, I'm kind of fanatical about sealant on air systems. And really the reason why is because you pretty much can never get air systems to fully seal. They will pretty much always leak to some degree. And it's a real pain when you get into your vehicle and you want to use your air system and it's like, oh man, the pressure's all the way down to zero. And then you got to fire it up and you got to wait a few minutes for it to get up to a you know, pressure you can use. It's really nice when it can just hold it and you don't have to run your air compressor as much. And of course, having a bigger air system like I'm going to have with bigger tanks and more fittings only, of course, introduces um, a longer time to get charged up to pressure and also more chance of leaks and so I'm very fanatical about that and of course in a vehicle we not only have vibration but we also more importantly have uh, thermal cycling driving to a in freezing temperatures and up through really hot temperatures and of course the heat of the engine and everything so having good sealing and all these fittings is key and this will be a higher pressure system the pressure switch I'm putting in will shut off at 145 psi turn on at 110 psi so it'll be a good robust system at a higher pressure and of course higher pressure means more chance of, of leak so you can tell when I'm taking off this chuck valve here, sealant on there just basically wore right off, right? And so I'm going to reapply thread sealant to these threads here. So that way I have a really good sealant and I'm going to make sure, of course, it's clean. And then the chuck valve, of course, will allow air out, but not back in. And you can see the plug there too, same thing. See how that sealant came off. So now since I'm swapping these, I'm going to clean out these holes, just make sure there, there's no seal or anything built up in there. And that way, I don't have anything that gets caught, that debris get caught in the system. And, and I'm just going to reapply the sealant. We'll get these put back in. So there you go. So now you've got a nice sealant. I don't really worry about the very end, the tip where it's going to start. I want a little bit of a thread kind of expose it without the extra thickness of the sealant to basically get to help start it and get it going. And of course, I don't want that splooching around on the inside there. So hence why I kind of stop it there. And that takes care of that one. And then we'll do the same with the plug. And you want to kind of push it into the threads. And so it really gets into those threads. And that's one of the benefits of a liquid sealant like this, which you can tell it's not really liquid. It's very viscous, um, very thick viscosity. But now I can push it all the way down to those threads. It's a little hard to get like a PTFE tape, a thread sealant tape, to really get pushed in these threads quite as well as these paste sealants. By just standing it up on this socket, and let it dry a little bit before I put in, clean out these ports, and then I'll have my air compressor ready to go, ready to be installed. I already have the air filter uh, installed right over here. That's the air filter in the end um, for the air to come into the air filter, and that'll be facing downward because this, again, can be installed upside down. Um, orientation of these compressors doesn't matter. They can go in any direction. The cool thing, too, is I, I set it up, too, where I can easily access this filter. I can open this up, see if there's that nice little like eighth of a turn to do any service, including, of course, you know, changing out the air filter from time to time. And hopefully that's all I ever have to do on this and that's probably gonna be it. So I'm excited uh, to get this installed. So there we go, I got the ports clean. And before I go put these in, just one more extra little piece of information that might be helpful is you only put this thread sealant on the male fittings so such as this not on the female fittings you obviously really can't put thread sealing on those only on the male uh, just just so that's clear especially with this paste uh, sealant that I'm using unlike tape which you know paste sealing you could get in there you don't want to do that you just want to have it in the male threads only and this can dry by the way depending on the specs here these can dry for quite some time and by the way cool thing about this too is it can be disassembled as well and even reassembled after this has been applied properly tightened fittings will seal instantly to moderate pressures for maximum pressure resistance and solvent resistance allow the product to cure for a minimum of 24 hours so remember this is rated to 10,000 psi
All right, there we go. That is certainly tight enough. It's pretty tight. It's darn tight. I don't want to, of course, strip a thread or anything. These are smaller threads, but there you go. Now it's nice and tight, and of course, make sure I got my air flows are in the correct direction. Again, the way this is going to go is like this, and I'm going to have an air outlet hose line going to the rear ports, my one to the front ports. This is going to be my interconnect to my other tank. This here is my pressure switch, so very accessible and up against the chassis rails where it's protected, the wiring can be protected and easily bundled up so that wiring's out of the way. Obviously on the bottom, when this is hanging up, right there will be my drain valve and that's accessible. And then on the front here is my air tank and it's pretty nice because it's very light. Uh, which is fantastic. Purchase on Amazon. Unfortunately, they don't tell you what size these ports are. They just tell you how many ports. There's three different sizes, three eighths on the end, half inch here, and then a couple of uh, quarter inches over here on the other side. So I just had to start pulling my fittings to start testing them out and just see what they are. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Now I've got to um, do some adapters to go from half inch here down to my quarter inch, which are my air fittings, uh, my box of air fittings here. So I have to order a few more things up. That's a bit of a bummer. Uh, more money, more time ordering stuff. But here's a positive. Here's why another thing I need to get done. I spin welded on uh, the vent for this gray tank. I've got two gray tanks going in between the chassis rails here. Unfortunately, I can't cut the hole and spin weld in. Uh, the, in the inlet and outlet, which are gonna be the same, um, so I can get this mounted, which I'm really hoping to get this all mounted up. And the reason why, of course, is again because I'm waiting for some parts. And anyways, that really bums me out. I'm waiting for some parts again. Instead of just being able to rock and roll and get this thing done, right? And the other thing I'm kind of waiting for over here is I do have my air conditioning condenser, uh, which is really rad. I'm excited to get this mounted. It's going to get mounted down in here in this big open area, but I'm reluctant to mount it right now. Um, because I've got some other tanks and stuff that are going in here and so it'll be hard to get in here or this or maybe not hard but at least be difficult with once this uh, air conditioning condenser gets mounted in so I'm kind of at a standstill at the moment until I get some of these other parts here and so, without a doubt bums me out so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to turn I'm going to turn this negative and a delay of multiple days here waiting for parts and stuff to come to try to get some other things done and that other thing done the really big one is and it's a big one so yeah i kind of do gulp when i when i think about it and say it is i am going to tear apart the cabin the cab of this brand new truck take all the trim of it out and cut in the pass through it's got to get done you can tell I'm consternating and hesitating on it, but it's got to get done. And so taking a look at it here, I've got to do, after I take all the trim and stuff out, I've got to clean up this back wall so it's nice and clean. I'm going to go ahead and, and basically uh, uh, stencil out the, the cut the pass-through um, so I get that set up. I may remove the window or just leave that in for now. Um, I'm probably going to remove the snorkel because that's going to be in the way with the pass-through until I, I get the pass-through installed and I'm going to put the snorkel back on. So I'm going to clean this up. And I'm going to take all the trim off. That means the headliner, uh, the rear back panel here. Might take the seats out, might just leave them in, but we'll see how that plays out. That rear panel coming off, it doesn't look like it separates here, so I won't have to take the seat belts off, so that's good. But that's going to be a lot of work to take that out. And that also means probably taking out a few more things here. And while I'm taking this all out, like adding some insulation where I can in here, it's going to be a big deal um, to take all this out and uh, start uh, start disassembling this interior of this brand new cab and start. And the real scary part is going to be cutting that big hole, and it's going to be a big hole. It's about it's going to be somewhere roughly about between two two feet by four feet. So it's a pretty enormous big hole to put in the back of this brand new cab. But I can do that now. Hopefully, I can do that now. Hopefully, I get everything I need to do that with, and so I'm going to do that. And then meanwhile, I'm going to be waiting for all these other parts and stuff to arrive uh, over the next several days. And then I can get to finishing up some more of the stuff to get done the chassis rails here. So hopefully I'll still stay more or less on the schedule, which is about uh, which is to then put the camper floor and mount that on. 
uh, in a little more than a week from now. And so it's a lot to do over this next week, a lot. And if I can get the camper floor mounted and I already have the pass-through done, then I can also, which is really cool, at the same time mounting the camper floor, actually get the, the front wall mounted up. Um, I see no reason why not to do that. I should have everything as far as plumbing and everything done, hopefully over this next week, routed up and stuffed there as far as airlines and yeah, whatever else I got to think about here to do is if you're some wiring for the air pressure gauge and a few little things like that. So I'm going to have to kind of create a list and get all this stuff down anyway. So there's a quite a bit to do, but I'm going to try to turn my, my frustration and being bummed about not having all this stuff here and ready to rock and roll on what I had planned out to do and get all this stuff figured out this over going. this next week so that I can get the camper floor and uh, at least the camper floor put on and that was that's been the plan i'm changing my plan and i'm also trying to look at the positives here all right so getting to the positives i do have my air compressor installed extreme air 24 volt i've got a uh, uh, first initial tank installed here all the fittings and everything are installed on it pressure relief pressure gauge uh drain valve on the bottom uh my my airport here uh obviously the compressor's all installed air filter and everything with the intake on the bottom so it doesn't suck in um water or anything into it and this is all very nice and solidly mounted on this fiberglass uh u-channel which will help set, uh isolate the vibration from the chassis rails and the camper so that's in there which is great mm -hmm. 